Thank you for being here. Wonderful. Please take your seats, and I'll just say a few words of introduction. I'm Homi Baba, and I direct the humanities, uh, the Mahindra Humanities Center at Harvard. And uh, it's a great pleasure to have you here today. It's a very special and unusual event. We don't usually convene on Saturday afternoons. But um, on this occasion, we are here to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Tagore's Nobel Prize for Literature and the 100th anniversary of the lectures that Rabindranath Tagore delivered at Harvard. Um, this event is one that has been uh, inspired and convened by my dear friend and colleague, Professor Shogato Bose, the Gardner Professor of Oceanic Studies in the Department of History. And I would like to thank him for his remarkable and consistent support of the Mahindra Humanities Center, and within a larger frame, to thank him for being the founder and the founding director of the South Asia Institute, which in fact started off very much under his watch, his encouragement, and his inspiration as the South Asia Initiative. Professor Bose has a recent publication, 2006, called A Hundred Horizons, The Indian Ocean in the Age of Global Capital. And indeed, it is through his interests in the movement of people, ideas, cultural forms across the world that this particular event around Rabindranath Tagore has come to be. Tagore was the great cosmopolitan of the Indian national movement for independence. And indeed, the music we're going to hear today gives you a profound sense of that kind of cosmopolitanism. Translation is, of course, the vehicle of cosmopolitan ideas, the possibility of transferring a whole set of ideas, rhetorical forms, affective um, uh, feelings, imaginative reach from one language into another is always a way of changing both languages, cultures, and indeed altering the sense of subjectivity wherever cosmopolitanism plays its positive role. Professor Bose will be speaking after me and locating this evening in the work and thought and music of Tagore. But before he does that, I just wanted to say that his own, Sugar to Bose's own interests, as represented in a seminar that we taught together called South Asia Beyond Borders, is one which represents the same kind of cosmopolitan view that Tagore espoused in a moment of otherwise, at times, difficult and narrow uh, nationalism. The seminar, South Asia Without Borders, was one that took an oblique and at times critical view of the concept of the sovereignty of the nation state. It, through a series of speakers, and discussions, we chose to tell another story. The ways in which, other than forms of national citizenship, the whole area of cultural affiliation, or what one might call cultural citizenship, is often left out of the record. So you have the T.H. Marshall uh, well understood and and rigorous notion of political, legal, and social citizenship. But the ways in which culture both affiliates you through a sense of belonging 
And then when diasporic or transnational movements happen, new cultures are both assimilated and appropriated without in any way a desertion of the culture of origin. It's this melange, this coming together, this intercultural movement that cultural citizenship represents. And cultural citizenship is no respecter of narrow national cultural or linguistic boundaries. Like the flow of the ocean, like the flow of the river, which continually changes its banks as it moves on, as it moves from one source to another, cultural citizenship enlivens the groups of people who move, creating communities, new social constructs, different ways of affiliating to the nation and affiliating also to the new site or the new terrain of life. Cultural citizenship has a different jurisdiction than the notion of the sovereignty of the nation state. And it is this jurisdiction that Professor Bose chose to explore in the seminar we shared, South Asia Without Borders, and it is this kind of cultural citizenship that we will be hearing today in its beautifully vibrant musical form, because there is nothing that connects you to your neighbor, who may be your own brethren, native, or foreigner. There is nothing that connects you both to where you come from or to the country in which you have arrived, as does music. Shugata Bose's maternal grandfather, Charu Chandra Choudhury, had translated a range of Tagore songs that were published along with his translation of Tagore's poetry in the book entitled Purabi, The East in Its Feminine Gender. The poems composed on Tagore's voyage to Latin America in 1924 and 25 form the core of this book for which Shugato's mother Krishna and Shugato jointly wrote a literary and historical um, uh, introduction. Most recently, Shugato has translated nearly a hundred songs, including 40 that Tagore composed on his overseas voyages that have been recorded on a four CD set entitled Vishwa Yatru Rabindranath, Tagore the World Voyager. Bose has read his English translations and provided brief historical context of each of the songs, while Paramita Malik has sung the Bengali originals. This evening, we have the great privilege of hearing Shugato, our friend and colleague, resituate the songs of Tagore, and we're enormously grateful to our willing and enormously generous musicians who are here with us to bring Tagore and his music alive to us a hundred years after he spoke at this university, a hundred years after he won the Nobel Prize. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Homi, for that uh, beautiful and generous uh, introduction. I rely on my good friend for my image makeover <laughs> from being a dreary economic historian to a, performance, to, uh, to a performer on the cultural stage. Uh, I would also like to thank my dear colleague, uh, Professor Richard Wolf, uh, who helped us getting us this beautiful space in which to perform Tagore's music and to honor him on the 100th anniversary of his Nobel win. Rabindranath Tagore truly came to the attention of the Western world once he embarked on a voyage to Europe and America in June 1912 with a manuscript of Gitanjali. That original manuscript 
is now available in the Hutton Library right here at Harvard. He traveled on the ship, the city of Glasgow, and as he was sailing through the Red Sea, he wrote a famous song, Prano Bhorie Trisha Horie, More Aro 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 Dao Pran. I have translated it recently into English. Fill my heart, quench my thirst, grant me the exuberance of life. In your universe, your mansion, give me a spacious abode. More light, more light, pour light into these eyes, O Lord. Fill my flute with divine tunes, grant me a flood of melodies. More sorrow, more anguish, awake me to consciousness, O Lord. Open doors, break down barriers, rescue me, grant me deliverance. More love, more love, let my ego be drowned. In a torrent of nectar, give more, more, more of yourself. Tagore reached London on June 16th, and after a few days, he rented a house in Hampstead. The stunning natural beauty of Hampstead Heath was the setting for the composition of another song, Shundaro Bote Tabo Anga Dokhani Tarae Tarae Khochito. Tagore translated it himself, and it appeared in Gitanjali as Beautiful is Thy Wristlet. I have done a more modern rendering of that same song. Beautiful truly is your bracelet studded with stars. In gold and jewels it is enticing, I know, in myriad colors. Your scimitar is more gorgeous, drawn in a quiver of lightning. Garura's wing crimson tinged against the setting sun in the sky. Like life's last gasp on the verge of death, a dazzling deep anguish scorches in a flash all I possess in an intense, terrifying awakening. Beautiful truly is your bracelet studded with stars. Your scimitar, O Lord of Thunder, is the ultimate, forged in a terrible beauty. His devotional verse struck a chord with a section of Europe's literati, including William Butler Yeats, disenchanted with the crass material excesses of Britain's Edwardian age, and seized by a sense of impending apocalypse in the immediate pre-World War I era. A 15-year-old Subhash Chandra Bose wrote about Rabindranath to his elder brother Sharut on September 17, 1912, lamenting how indifferent Bengal has been in showering laurels upon him and has suffered his genius, superhuman though it is, to lie in the shade of neglect. Whereas a foreign people, speaking an alien tongue and cherishing ideas and sentiments diametrically opposed to ours in some cases, have lifted him up from this shade to sunshine and have extolled him as the greatest poet the world has produced. Tagore had composed most of his Gitanjali poems during a period of deep despondency, brought on by an unrelenting series of deaths of loved ones in his private life and the disillusionment bred by the decline of Bengal Swadeshi movement in the public domain. The rare, austere beauty of about half of the Gitanjali collection established Tagore's fame as a mystic in engrossed conversation with the Supreme Being and laid the basis for a somewhat blinkered, and one-dimensional view of his genius. During the months that the first edition of Gitanjali was enchanting readers in Europe, the poet was actually in the United States. We have landed in New York this morning, Tagore wrote to William Rothenstein on October 27, 1912, and passed through the ordeals of the Custom House. My turban attracted the notice of a newspaper interviewer and he attacked me with questions, but I was almost as silent as my turban. From New York, he went to Urbana-Champaign and later lectured in Chicago and at Harvard. The United States had made an unfavorable first impression on Tagore. I must say I do not like it, he wrote to Rothenstein on October 31st. America, like an unripe fruit, has not got its proper flavor yet. It has a sharp and acid taste. 
He began to change his opinion upon re reaching Urbana-Champaign. Ezra Pound had sent what he described as the scoop of the year, six poems by Tagore to Harriet Monroe, the editor of the poetry magazine in Chicago. These were duly published in December 1912, along with Pound's critical appreciation. Tagore came to Boston in the new year to see his Japanese friend, Okakura Tenshin, who was then curator at the Museum of Fine Arts. It was Okakura, the researchers of my doctoral student, Mo Banerjee, has shown. It was Okakura who was instrumental in having Tagore invited to Harvard. At the formal invitation of James Horton Woods, a philosophy professor, Tagore delivered four lectures at Harvard on February 14th and 17th and April 7th and 9th, 1913. T.S. Eliot, then a student at Harvard, was a member of the audience. The lectures were later incorporated in Tagore's book titled Sadhana, The Realization of Life, published in November 1913. By the time Tagore returned to England in April 1913, he was already a celebrity. And on August 24th, 1913, he composed a song on his newfound fame at his temporary home on Cheney Walk in Chelsea, Emoni Haramai Nahishaje, This Jeweled Chain Is Not For Me, which we will, with which we will conclude this uh, evening's program at the very, very end. He left for India in September of 1913. He wrote a number of songs on his voyage back on the city of Lahore, and I'll just uh, share with you two very short ones. Bajao Amare Bajao. Set my life to music. Play your melody of the light at dawn in my life. The tune that fills your wordless songs and the child's flute of life smiling at its mother's face. Make me the instrument of that tune. Adorn me, adorn me in the dress that adorns the dust of this earth. The rhythmic beauty of the evening malati adorned in its secret aroma. The decoration that joyfully forgets itself embellish me in that adornment. And the final song on that voyage, written on September 19, 1913. No, no, this is no charming dalliance. You and I, morning and evening, all life long. No charming dalliance is this. So many times the light has gone out. The stormy night has come roaring, rocking the swing of life with doubt. Again and again, sweeping floods have burst the banks. In dreadful times, cries of lament have rent all directions. O oh, destroyer, in grief and joy, my heart has learned this lesson. There are painful blows in your love, but never neglect. The Nobel Prize for Literature, the Harvard Crimson reported awkwardly in November 1913, has recently been awarded to the British Indian poet, Mr. Ravindranath Tagore. This is the first time that the award has been made to other than a member of the white race. Last spring, Mr. Tagore gave a series of lectures in English at Emerson Hall, dealing with subjects of Far Eastern philosophy. The British Indian poet. A hundred years later, we hardly need to reclaim him as a Bengali poet. After all, we offered him to the world of letters as the greatest gift from Bengal, as Bishokobi, a global poet. So I think it is time to let the music flow. And um, we will begin with the Bengali original of You Are the Evening Cloud, which appeared in The Gardener, another of Tagore's books published in 1913. And to accompany me, I have Dipankar Deshmukh, a very old family friend from Kolkata, now a Boston-based entrepreneur and software engineer by profession, but music is his passion. And he will be playing with me um, Tagore's favorite instrument, the Esraj. <laughs> Thank you. 
তুমি সন্ধার মেঘমালা তুমি আমার সাধের সাধনা মম শূন্য গগন বিহারী আমি আপন মনের মাধুরী মিশায় তোমারে করেছি রচনা তুমি আমারি তুমি আমারি মম অসীম গগন বিহারি তুমি সন্ধার মেঘমালা তুমি আমার সাধের সাধনা মম হৃদয় রক্ত রাগে তব চরণ দিয়েছি রাঙিয়া মম হৃদয় রক্ত রাগে তব চরণ দিয়েছি রাঙিয়া ওই সন্ধ্যা স্বপন বিহারি তব অধর এঁকেছি সুধা বিষে মিশে মম সুখ দুঃখ ভাঙিয়া তুমি আমারি তুমি আমারি মম বিজন জীবন বিহারি তুমি সন্ধার মেঘমালা তুমি আমার সাধের সাধনা মম মোহের স্বপন অঞ্জন তব নয়নে দিয়েছি পরায়ে ওই মুগ্ধ নয়ন বিহারি মম সঙ্গীত তব অঙ্গে অঙ্গে দিয়েছি জড়ায়ে জড়ায়ে মম সঙ্গীত তব অঙ্গে অঙ্গে দিয়েছি জড়ায়ে জড়ায়ে তুমি আমারি তুমি আমারি মম জীবন মরণ বিহারি তুমি সন্ধার মেঘমালা তুমি আমার সাধের সাধনা মম শূন্য গগন বিহারি আমি আপন মনের মাধুরি মিশায় তোমারে করেছি রচনা তুমি আমারি তুমি আমারি মম অসীম গগন বিহারি তুমি সন্ধার মেঘমালা তুমি আমার সাধের সাধনা You are the evening cloud floating in the sky of my dreams. I paint you and fashion you ever with my love longings. You are my own, my own, dweller in my endless dreams. Your feet are rosy red with the glow of my heart's desire, gleaner of my sunset songs. Your lips are bittersweet with the taste of my wine of pain. You are my own, my own, dweller in my lonesome dreams. With the shadow of my passion, have I darkened your eyes, haunter of the depth of my gaze. I have caught you and wrapped you, my love, in the net of my music. You are my own, my own, dweller in my deathless dreams. Peter Terry is a freelance singer and impresario based in Boston. He has sung on three continents, eight countries, and dozens of venues. Peter first read Gitanjali in 1970, 
and sang some settings of some of the poems in six recitals in India in 1992. He counts Tagore as one of his most important guides in life and art. And had he not visited me a few months ago in my office, we would not be having this wonderful evening. Peter. And thank you, Professor Bowles, for making all of this possible. Uh, it was just an idea when I came to you. I'm going to say a few words about this poem, which had a, quite an extraordinary uh, history after Tagore wrote it. Uh, in the years immediately following Tagore's first visit to the West in 1913, his poetry was translated into a great many languages, including into French by André Gide, into Russian by Pasternak and Akhmatova, and into Spanish by Juan Ramon Jimenez and Zenobia Camprubi. Latin American writers were also influenced by Tagore's work. The Mexican poet Octavio Paz, the Chilean poet Gabriel Mistral, and the Argentine Victoria Ocampo were among them. But perhaps none were as deeply touched by Tagore's words as the Chilean poet Pablo Neruda, born in 1904 and deceased in 1973, 40 years ago this year. It was his collection published in 1924 when he was only 19 years old and entitled Veinte Poemas de Amor y una Canción Desesperada that catapulted Neruda to worldwide acclaim and remain enduringly popular. The 16th poem in that collection was a reworking in Spanish of a poem numbered 30 in Rabindranath Tagore he, Tagore's collection, The Gardener, published in 1913. As this poem was originally written in Bengali and sung by Professor Bose, there are no less than three world-famous versions of the same poem. Now I want to invite uh, Rosario Hubert to come and uh, recite this poem in the original uh, Spanish, and uh, Rosario is a doctoral student here at Harvard University. Her field is Latin American literature, and she is studying the connections between Asian and Latin literature. En mi cielo al crepúsculo eres como una nube, y tu color y tu forma son como yo los quiero. Eres mía, eres mía, mujer de labios dulces y viven en tu vida mis infinitos sueños. La lámpara de mi alma te sonrosa los pies, el agrio vino es más dulce en tus labios. Oh, cegadora de mi canción al atardecer, cómo te sienten mía mis sueños solitarios. Eres mía, eres mía, voy gritando en la brisa de la tarde y el viento arrastra mi voz viuda. Cazadora del fondo de mis ojos, tu robo estanca como el agua tu mirada nocturna. En la red de mi música estás presa, amor mío, y mis redes de música son anchas como el cielo. Mi alma nace a la orilla de tus ojos de luto, y en tus ojos de luto comienza el país del sueño. Professor Bose has told you all about Gitanjali. So I will say only a very few words um, about this collection that was set to music by, um, by John Alden Carpenter, who will be the first composer to be featured here. Um, the collection of Gitanjali that we know in English that won Tagore the Nobel Prize was composed of 157 poems. Uh, I, excuse me, the, the original collection in Bengali was 157 poems, and it was published in 1910. When, when Tagore decided to collect uh, English texts or, or to translate his poems from the Bengali into English, he drew actually from several different sources. He drew 53 from Gitanjali and 50 others from eight other books of poetry. 
and then also verses from one of his dramas called Ashatalayan. He took these poems to England, as uh, Professor Bose explained, in June 1912, and it was these poems which were subsequently published in 19, later in that year, and then they were the cause of, them, of uh, him being uh, endorsed as a um, Nobel laureate or applicant. So the first um, collection we're going to do uh, of songs are settings by John Alden Carpenter. And first, I want to introduce to you uh, our pianist this evening, Matthew Auerbach. Um, and, and Matthew has uh, appeared in many music series in the San Francisco Bay Area, Boston, and New York. And he enjoys uh, playing a wide variety of solo and chamber music repertoire and a currently an active member of the New York Piano Society. He won the privilege of performing on, in uh, Nar Carnegie Hall a couple of years ago. And now he has the privilege of performing in Payne Hall at Harvard University. There you go. So the first poem we're going to uh, 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 perform is actually very famous in its translation as Light My Light. But first, it will be sung by Professor Bose. Tagore had lectured on April 7th, 1913 at Harvard on the problem of the self. Self find its end, he concluded, in the repose of beauty, the action of goodness, and the union of love. The themes of beauty, goodness, and love permeated his poetry. Tagore excelled both as the poet of the night and the poet of the light. The night was the time for an anxious search for the beloved who might appear even before the dawn of the first light. Here is his song about light. <clears throat> Alo Amar, Alo Go, Alo Bhuban Bhara, Alo Noyon Dhoa Amar, Alo Ridae Hara, Alo Amar, Alo Go, Alo Bhuban Bhara, Alo Noyon Dhoa Amar, Alo Nace alo, nace o bhai, amar praner kache. Baje alo, baje o bhai, ridae binar maje. Nace alo, nace o bhai, amar praner kache. Baje alo, baje o bhai, ridae binar maje. Jage akash, chote batash, hashe shakol dhara. Alo amar, alo go, alo bhuban bhara. Alo noyon dhoa amar, alo hidae hara. Alo rasrote pal tule che hajar prajapati. Alo rdhewe uthlo mete molli kamalati. Alo rasrote pal tule che hajar prajapati. Alo rdhewe uthlo mete molli kamalati. Meghe meghe shona o bhai jaye na manik gona. Patae patae hashi o bhai pulak rashi rashi. Meghe meghe shona o bhai jaye na manik gona. Patae patae hashi o bhai pulak rashi rashi. 
সুরো নদীর কুল ডুবেছে সুধা নিঝর ঝরা আলো আমার আলো ওগো আলো ভুবন ভরা আলো নয়ন ধোয়া আমার আলো হৃদয়ে হরা Light, my light, the world filling light, the eye kissing light, heart sweetening light. Ah, the light dances, my darling, at the center of my life. The light strikes, my darling, the chords of my love. The sky opens, the wind runs wild, laughter passes over the earth. The butterflies spread their sails on the sea of light. Lilies and jasmine surge up on the crest of the waves of light. The light is shattered into gold on every cloud, my darling, and it scatters gems in profusion. Mirth spreads from leaf to leaf, my darling, and gladness without measure. The heaven's river has drowned its banks, and the flood of joy is abroad. I'm going to tell you about Carpenter, but after we sing a few of his songs. is my darling at the center of my life the light strikes my darling the chords of thy sky opens the wind runs wild laughter passes over the earth the butterflies spread their sails on the sea of love Lilies and jasmine surge up on the crest of the waves of light. The light is shattered into gold on every cloud, my darling. And it scatters gems in profusion. Mirth spreads from leaf to leaf, my darling, and a gladness without measure. The heavens And the flood of joy is abroad.
Peter, why don't you tell us a little bit about John Alden Carpenter before we go to the next song, shall certainly, we? Certainly. Um, John Alden Carpenter was a Harvard uh, alum. <laughs> All right. Um, he was born in 1876, died in 1951, uh, raised in a musical household. Uh, he went to Harvard and studied under John Knowles Payne, after whom this hall is named. He was president of the Harvard Glee Club and wrote music for the Hasty Pudding Club. Uh, showing great promise as a composer, he journeyed to London and then to Rome to study under Edward Elgar, like Charles Ives. He earned a comfortable living in a profession having nothing to do with music. After his retirement, he spent much of his time composing and composed three ballets, including one based on Crazy Cat comics and another called Skyscrapers. One of his most famous works was an impressionistic orchestral suite called Adventures in a Perambulator, which for those of you who don't know what that is, it means a baby carriage. Um, he also composed a symphony and many piano pieces and songs, and this song cycle, Gitanjali, which is probably his most famous work today. Uh, now, Professor Bose will recite the next poem, uh, which is number 62 from the Gitanjali, called When and Why. When I bring you colored toys, my child, I understand why there is such a play of colors and clouds on water, and why flowers are painted in tints when I give colored toys to you, my child. When I sing to make you dance, I truly know why there is music in leaves and why waves send their chorus of voices to the heart of the listening earth when I sing to make you dance. When I bring sweet things to your greedy hands, I know why there is honey in the cup of the flower and why fruits are secretly filled with sweet juice when I bring sweet things to your greedy hands. When I kiss your face to make you smile, my darling, I surely understand what pleasure streams from the sky in morning light and what delight the summer breeze brings to my body when I kiss you to make you smile. toys, my child. I understand where there is such a play of colors on clouds, on water, and why flowers are painted in tints when I give colored toys to you, my child. When I sing to make you dance, I truly know why there is music in leaves, and why we and the chorus of voices to the heart of the listening earth. When I sing to make you dance, when I bring sweet things to your greedy heart, I know why there is honey in the cup of the flower, and why fruits are secretly filled with sweet juice.
when I breathe sweet things to The Source, number 61, in Gitanjali. The sleep that flits on baby's eyes, does anybody know from where it comes? Yes, there is a rumor that it has its dwelling where in the fairy village, among shadows of the forest dimly lit with glowworms, there hang two shy buds of enchantment. From there it comes to kiss baby's eyes. The smile that flickers on baby's lips when he sleeps, does anybody know where it was born? Yes, there is a rumor that a young pale beam of a crescent moon touched the edge of a vanishing autumn cloud, and there the smile was first born in the dream of a dew-washed morning, the smile that flickers on baby's lips when he sleeps. The sweet, soft freshness that blooms on baby's limbs. Does anybody know where it was hidden so long? Yes, when the mother was a young girl, it lay pervading her heart in tender and silent mystery of love, the sweet, soft freshness that has bloomed on baby's limbs.
I want to introduce to you the next singer, Jaya Lakshmi Narayan. Almost? Close enough. Close enough. Um, um, and uh, Jaya is um, from Michigan, so she says. And she's performed in Pennsylvania, Portugal, and throughout New England. She is the, a member of the medieval ensemble called Meraveia, and she has a, uh, performed as a soloist with various ensembles in the area, including the Andover Choral Society, the Philharmonic Society of Arlington, and Seven Times Salt. And this is her premiere performance with us in Tagore Songs. I am like a remnant, number 80 in Gitanjali. I am like a remnant of a cloud of autumn uselessly roaming in the sky, O oh, my sun ever glorious. Thy touch has not yet melted my vapor, making me one with thy light, and thus I count months and years separated from thee. If this be thy wish, and if this be thy play, then take this fleeting emptiness of mine, paint it with colors, gild it with gold, float it on the wanton wind, and spread it in varied wonders. And again, when it shall be thy wish to end this play at night, I shall melt and vanish away in the dark, or it may be in a smile of the white morning, in a coolness of purity transparent.
it shall it be thy wish to end this play at night. I shall melt and vanish away in the dark. Or it may On the Seashore of Endless Worlds, number 60 in Gitanjali. On the seashore of endless worlds, children meet. The infinite sky is motionless overhead, and the restless water is boisterous. On the seashore of endless worlds, the children meet with shouts and dances. They build their houses with sand, and they play with empty shells. With withered leaves, they weave their boats, and smilingly float them on the vast deep. Children have their play on the seashore of worlds. They know not how to swim. They know not how to cast nets. Pearl fishers dive for pearls. Merchants sail in their ships, while children gather pebbles and scatter them again. They seek not for hidden treasures. They know not how to cast nets. The sea surges up with laughter, and pale gleams the smile of the sea beach. Death-dealing waves sing meaningless ballads to the children, even like a mother while rocking her baby's cradle. The sea plays with children, and pale gleams the smile of the sea beach. On the seashore of endless worlds, children meet. Tempest roams in the pathless sky, ships are wrecked in the trackless water, death is abroad and children play. On the seashore of endless worlds is the great meeting of children. On the seashore. 
On the day when death will knock, number 19, Gitanjali. On the day when death will knock at thy door, what wilt thou offer to him? Oh, I will set before my guest the full vessel of my life. I will never let him go with empty hands. All the sweet vintage of all my autumn days and summer nights, all the earnings and gleanings of my busy life, will I place before him at the close of my days, when death will knock at my door.
the sweet vintage of all my autumn days and summer nights. All the earnings and cleanings of my busy life will I place before him at the close of my day. We will take a very short intermission and then return to you with a different mood and beat with Tagore in Russian. I want to welcome you back and I want to introduce you the next singer in the program, Alexander Shelag, mezzo-soprano, who is, uh, lives in Boston but came from Poland. And she has appeared in various opera scenes, concerts uh, with the Janus Opera, and also with a, the Commonwealth Lyric Theater production of Aleko by Rachmaninoff. And she will be singing four songs uh, composed by Alexander Gerchaninov. And a few words about him. Born in 1864, dying in 1956, coming from Russia, settled in the United States. He began his studies uh, at Moscow Conservatory against his father's wishes. You see, there's a theme there. You know, there are many people who are, of uh, these people associated with Tagore were sort of rebellious and didn't want to do what daddy told them to do, and so was Rabindranath Tagore. Um, he composed several operas, five symphonies, the first premiered by Rimsky-Korsakov, uh, string quartets, um, all, a great variety of music. And then these songs, which is a set of poems from the Crescent Moon, another collection of poetry, uh, published in 1913. There were three collections of poems published in 1913 um, about uh, just prior to uh, Tagore being awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. One was Gitanjali, the second uh, was The Crescent Moon, and the third was The Gardener. And this was, these poems were translated into Russian by Alexei Evgenievich Gruzinsky and uh, his Opus 95. Vocation. When the gong sounds 10 in the morning and I walk to school by our lane, every day I meet the hawker crying, bangles, crystal bangles. There is nothing to hurry him on. There is no road he must take, no place he must go to, no time when he must come home. I wish I were a hawker spending my day in the road crying, bangles, crystal bangles. When at four in the afternoon I come back from the school, I can see through the gate of that house the gardener digging the ground. He does what he likes with his spade. He soils his clothes with dust. Nobody takes him to task if he gets baked in the sun or gets wet. I wish I were a gardener digging away at the garden with nobody to stop me from digging. Just as it gets dark in the evening, and my mother sends me to bed, I can see through my open window the watchman walking up and down. The lane is dark and lonely, and the street lamp stands like a giant with one red eye in its head. 
The watchman swings his lantern and walks with his shadow at his side and never once goes to bed in his life. I wish I were a watchman walking the streets all night, chasing the shadows with my lantern. Час of пропьет, в школу я иду скучаю, и раз ночика встречаю, лишь зайду за поворот, и в солнце, и в ненасти, раз ночик мой идет, и громко он поет, хрустал. Paper boats. Day by day I float my paper boats, one by one down the running stream. In big black letters I write my name on them and the name of the village where I live. I hope that someone in some strange land will find them and know who I am. I load my little boats with jasmine flowers from our garden and hope that these blooms of the dawn will be carried safely to land in the night. I launch my paper boats and look up into the sky and see the little clouds setting their white bulging sails. I know not what playmate of mine in the sky sends them down the air to race with my boats. When night comes, I bury my face in my arms and dream that my paper boats float on and on under the midnight stars. The fairies of sleep are sailing in them and the lading is their baskets full of dreams. Go. 
сияют звезды, и луна меж облака. Sympathy. If I were only a little puppy, not your baby, mother dear, would you say no to me if I tried to eat from your dish? Would you drive me off, saying to me, get away, you naughty little puppy? Then go, mother, go. I will never come to you when you call me, and never let you feed me any more. If I were only a little green parrot, and not your baby, mother dear, would you keep me chained lest I should fly away? Would you shake your finger at me and say, what an ungrateful wretch of a bird, it is gnawing at its chain day and night? Then go, mother, go. I will run away into the woods. I will never let you take me in your arms again. Я не мальчик твой, а маленький щеночек. И захотел бы я порой с тарелки взять кусочек. Ты закричала, ой-ой-ой, щенок противный, прочь, ступай. Ведь так бы ты сказала, да. Оставь, оставь меня тогда. Я спрячусь, не найдешь, без следу не стану приходить и не зови меня к обеду. И так себя кормить. А вдруг не попадаем, стать пришлось бы и сыночка. Меня решила бы держать, ты в клетке на цепочке, и слушал бы твою я брань. А что за птица, что за дрянь? Чего ей надо день и ночь все те клюют, все хочет прочь, ты так бы говорила, да. Оставь, оставь меня тогда, в густом лесу хочу скрываться, прощай, оставь меня в густом лесу хочу скрываться. The beginning. Where have I come from? Where did you pick me up? The baby asked its mother. She answered half crying, half laughing, and clasping the baby to her breast. You were hidden in my heart as its desire, my darling. You were in the dolls of my childhood's games, and when with clay I made the image of my God every morning, I made and unmade you then. You were enshrined with our household deity. In his worship, I worshipped you. In all my hopes and my loves in my life, in the life of my mother, you have lived. In the lap of the deathless spirit who rules our home, you have been nursed for ages. When in girlhood my heart was opening its petals, you hovered as a fragrance about it. Your tender softness bloomed in my youthful limbs like a glow in the sky before the sunrise. Heaven's first darling, twin born with the morning light, you have floated down the stream of the world's life, and at last you have stranded on my heart. As I gaze on your face, mystery overwhelms me, and you, who belong to all, have become mine. For fear of losing you, I hold you tight to my breast. What magic has snared the world's treasure 
in these slender arms of mine. I want to um, introduce the third, well, we, this evening we have three deceased composers, well, four, including Tagore himself, and then one living composer who will be introduced anon. Um, the third um, is uh, Komalata Banerjee, and this is, a, this is a bit of a story here. Komalata Banerjee was born of parents who were themselves born in England, but they are actually Indian. Sir Albion Rajkumar Banerjee and Lady Banerjee. And uh, Komalata studied at the Conservatoire de Paris, as well as in London. She was a pianist. We know she was a pianist because she gave a solo recital of her piano compositions at Steinway Hall in London in 1923, and it was written up in the press. We also know that she was a very skilled orchestrator, and this is not written up in any book. I found it out because in the theater collection at Harvard, in your special theater collection, there's a collection of scores of pieces that were written for the great uh, Russian ballerina Anna Pavlova, and among those is a suite of pieces composed by Komolata Banerjee. So the actual original score of this orchestral music and all of the parts for all of the, all of the instruments are here in the library and not published and not available anyplace else in the world. So these are some songs uh, that she wrote, settings of Gitanjali poems, Three of them in English, one in the French translation of André Gide. And we end with the French one. And um, Jaya will, will resume her singing at this point with Mother I Shall Weave. Mother 
I shall weave a chain of pearls for thy neck with my tears of sorrow. The stars have wrought their anklets of light to deck thy feet, but mine will hang on thy breast. Wealth and fame come from thee, and it is for thee to give or to withhold them. But this, my sorrow, is absolutely mine own, and when I bring it to thee as my offering, thou rewardest me with thy grace. Early in the day, number 42 in Gitanjali. Early in the day it was whispered that we should sail in a boat, only thou and I, and never a soul in the world would know of this our pilgrimage, to no country and to no end. In that shoreless ocean, at thy silently listening smile, my songs would swell in melodies, free as waves, free from all bondage of words. Is the time not come yet? Are there works still to do? Lo, the evening has come down upon the shore, and in the fading light the seabirds come flying to their nests. Who knows when the chains will be off, and the boat, like the last glimmer of sunset, vanish into the night?
Yes, I know this is nothing but thy love, number 59 in Gitanjali. Yes, I know this is nothing but thy love, O beloved of my heart, this golden light that dances upon the leaves, these idle clouds sailing across the sky, this passing breeze leaving its coolness upon my forehead. The morning light has flooded my eyes, this is thy message to my heart. Thy face is bent from above, thy eyes look down on my eyes, and my heart has touched thy feet.
The, long, the last poem of this set by Komalata Banerjee is in French. It was, um, the French version was written by André Paul Gide, uh, himself a close friend of W.B. Yeats, and um, who became informed about these poems in English very early in 1912 and translated the entire collection of Gitanjali uh, into French, and which was published in 1913. I'll read you the poem in French and then sing Banerjee's setting of it. Lumière, ma lumière, lumière emplissant le monde, lumière baiser des yeux, douceur du cœur, lumière. Ah, la lumière danse au centre de ma vie, bien-aimé, mon amour retentit sous la frappe de la lumière. Les cieux s'ouvrent, le vent bondit, un rire a parcouru la terre. Sur l'océan de la lumière, mon bien-aimé, le papillon ouvre son aile. La crête des vagues de la lumière brille de lys et de jasmin. La lumière, oh mon bien-aimé, brécille l'or sur les nuées. Elle éparpille à profusion les pierreries. Une jubilation s'étend de feuille en feuille, ô oh, mon amour une aise sans mesure. Le fleuve du ciel a noyé ses rives, tout le flot de joie et de or. Lumière, ma lumière, lumière remplissant le monde, lumière baisée des yeux, du soin du corps, lumière. Lumière, ma lumière, lumière remplissant le monde. Lumière, baiser des yeux, douceur du corps, lumière. Sur les serrons de la lumière, mon bien-aimé, le papillon ouvre son œil. Une jubilation si dans le feuille en feuille, ô oh mon amour, une aile sans mesure, la flamme du ciel a noyé ses rives. to say a few words about the living composer who is represented in the conclusion of this program. We have a living translator and a living composer. The translator is our Professor Bos, and the living composer is J.J. Hollingsworth. Would you please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> J.J. is an award-winning composer. She's been professionally putting music to words for over 25 years. Now, now comes the interesting part of the sentence. She grew up on a cattle ranch in Colorado, and she was born to write music. 
Her grandmother wrote gospel hymns and her mother was a self-taught musician. Along with her sister and two brothers, they drove 130 miles round trip for piano lessons. Now that's dedication. Music was the family's entertainment. JJ graduated from San Francisco Conservatory of Music with a master's degree in 1986, as did I. That's where we met. JJ says all of her pieces have some sort of relevance to what is going on in her life. So you can imagine the enormous challenge of setting a poem that is about an incident in Tagore's life and an incident in 1912. And now, um, Professor Bose is going to tell you a little bit about that poem and recite it in Bengali and then uh, in English, and then I'll sing it in the English setting by JJ. It is sometimes mistakenly thought that uh, Rabindranath Tagore composed E Moni Haramai Nahi Shaje after getting the Nobel Prize. But in fact, uh, he wrote it on August 24th, 1913, while living on Cheney Walk uh, in London, almost in anticipation uh, of the prize. He had been virtually unknown when he first arrived uh, in London uh, the previous year. But once he returned from the United States, in April of 1913, he had already earned some fame, and he was uncomfortable with his newfound fame in England during the summer of 1913. So that is the context in which uh, he composed this song. So I will um, sing for it you f first in the Bangla original, and then I will uh, read you my translation, which I'm very honored to have had J.J. Uh, Hollingsworth uh, set to music. E moni har amai nahi shaje E moni har amai nahi shaje Ere por te gele lage Ere chhir te gele baje E moni har amai nahi shaje Kan tha je rodh kare Shur to nahi share Kan tha je rodh kare Shur to nahi share Oi di ke je mon pore rae mon lage na kaje E moni har amai nahi shaje Tai to boshe achi E har to mai parai jodi Tabe yami baanchi Tai to boshe aachi Phulo malar dore Bori alo more Phulo malar dore Bori alo more Tomar kache dakhai ne mukh moni malar laje E moni har amai nahi shaje E re por te gele lage E re chhir te gele baje E moni har amai nahi shaje
This jeweled chain is not for me. It is painful to wear, wounds me as I struggle to tear it off. It stifles my voice, silences my melodies, distracts my mind from my work. That is why I am waiting. If only I could offer you this necklace, I would be saved. Accept me, bind me to you with a garland of flowers. I cannot show you my face, shamed by this string of gems. Thank you very much. On behalf of Harvard University, Matt Auerbach, Alexandra Selag, 
Jaya Lakshmi Naranan, Peter Terry, Dipu Deshmukh, and in the audience, J.J. Hollingsworth. And thank you all for being here to celebrate Rabindranath Tagore. Thank you. And Rosario Hubert in the audience as well. Thank you.